Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a unique product, um, relatively unique. I haven't seen anything like this on the market. It's called Model Mates Weathering Liquids. And uh, Model Mates uh, is, it produced a series of, produces a series of pigment liquids that are water soluble. And this separates it from some of the other more conventional uh, weathering materials whereby once you apply the material, you can then remove it or, or you know, sort of buff it out to create modeled effects with it, and it remains water-soluble permanently. So it's the kind of thing you can apply and then take back if you feel like you've got too much on there, and it uh, comes in a variety of colors. And so what I've done today is I have, um, I finally have acquired um, a, a bigger portion of the range of colors available, and I've uh, set them out so we can take a look at them, and then um, I'd like to share with you some tips on how I've been using them, and uh, also some of the problems that I've had with them as well. So let's take a closer look at the colors, and we can go from there. So originally when Model Mates was uh, released, I, I don't know how long it's been out. Um, I don't think a terribly long time. Um, they were sold in these glass jars, which I really like. It's, you know, it's a classy packaging. You don't see many things sold in glass anymore. Um, inside, as soon as I mix it, there is a uh, shaker ball. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Um, the shaker ball is a great indicator of how much you need to shake it to mix it. As you noticed, it takes a while for that to free up. Give me a close-up on that. Uh, and the um, uh, one of the things is that it does um, settle relatively quickly to the bottom. It's a heavy kind of weighted pigment. Um, it seems to be um, in a uh, like an alcohol-based um, uh, solvent, and uh, I should say I'm jumping around here. Uh, it is now sold in a plastic container. Um, the plastic containers actually, I think, are the same price and are slightly smaller. This is, I think, 33. Oh, this is 22 mils, and the new plastic containers are 18 mils. Um, but whatever, you know. I mean. Uh, you know, it's probably a lot cheaper for them to produce it this way, and quite frankly, I'd like to see this company do well since um, uh, it's not well known here in the States. They are out of the UK, and I'll provide more information on that at the end of the video. Um, this is, um, there are basically two uh, styles of liquids. They have their traditional colors, like this moss green, which is um, completely transparent. And so it doesn't show very well, not completely, obviously it has pigment to it, as you can see. But um, it's a transparent color. And they released two new colors, um, one of which I picked up in the uh, rust effect. Uh, this is actually designed to be more opaque and go over darker colors. And I found that actually it really does do that job quite a bit better, um, as I've been working on the Imperial Sectors and putting that down. And I'll talk about that again at the end of the video. But um, just to note that they have two basic formulations. Most of the colors are in their translucent and then they have the rust effect and I think brick effect which is designed to go in between the bricks and act as the grouting agent. So what I've done here is I decided to um, just try to give you a little sense of the color spectrum that um, they have. Now this is not every color they offer but it is um, you know most of them I guess at this point. Uh, mud brown, moss green, mold, this is a new color it's a lot lighter than the moss green. Uh, rusty red, this is their translucent then they have soot black, oil brown, and uh, rust effect. And rust effect is the opaque one, or it's supposed to be more opaque. So what I did here is I um, just put a little blob on the paper, tried to give it a very dark you know, pool here as the color intensifies as you pool it, and then draw that down with a brush a little bit and try to thin it out so you could see how the color changes uh, as it's drawn. One thing to note is that as these colors get thinner, um, they retain their color pretty well, um, but they get you know a little more transparent, which is a, a nice effect that's kind of unique to this product. Uh, but um, in the rust effect, notice here that it actually makes a bit of a color shift. When it's thin, it's actually quite yellow, and then um, as it deepens, it turns into a ready, ruddy, uh, brownish red. And so um, that is kind of actually a really nice feature, as when you put a, a splotch down, um, you'll get a halo of lighter shades around it, looking like it's rusting at the edges. It, it's, it's quite an, a nice effect, actually. I like it quite a bit. And then what I did is I took those colors and put them in my airbrush to see, uh, this was actually my first attempt at airbrushing them, to see how they airbrush out, and uh, they airbrush great. Um, you know, these are um, 
is that focused? It's hard to tell with the uh, <laughs> with the airbrush gradient there. Um, they they are alcohol soluble, so um, or water soluble, and I mix them with alcohol for this spraying application. So. What really makes Model Mates unique? It's not their color range, and it's not even their transparency, but the fact that you can play with the material after you've applied it um, simply with a wet brush. Now, actually, I probably should be using alcohol, as I found if you spray it with alcohol, alcohol will remove it more easily. If you spray it with water, you can use water to remove it. Um, but um, notice here, actually, before I, I do this little demo here, I actually dripped um, while I was working with the airbrush. I actually dripped a couple drops of water on it while I was cleaning the airbrush, and you can see immediately how it just pools it up. But, I mean, it's, you know, it's on there. It's dry. It's, it's non-transferable. Um, but when you add a little bit of water to it, you can just move it right around however you want. So I've been playing with it by, you know, pushing it around, getting modeled effects, um, I've been using it as a liner, I, you know, all sorts of different ways to try to uh, play with this kind of material, but it's wonderful because you can continuously pick it, and then once you wet it, you can start drawing it out and doing whatever you want with it. One of the ways they recommend using it in the, in the um, actual website is to uh, take a paper towel you know, bunch it up. I, funny, I don't have a paper towel here with me. But anyway, you know, make a make a ball, dampen it lightly, and then you can rub on the the surface of the material and basically on a textured surface. Now, I chose a very smooth, you know, piece of plastic card here to show it on a, a very flat white background. But when you have texture, you can rub it off of the surface, and then it's left in the pits in between. Um, and uh, you can you know blend it with other colors. You know, it's so you can achieve you know gradients between the two. It's really, really an interesting product and is something that is, um, you know, not, it's not like any other product that you've probably ever used. So it's something you're going to have to play with to find out the ways that you really like to, uh, you know, achieve effects with it. One of the things I noticed, however, is that it may be hard to protect it from future water applications. Um, so what I've done here, just to try, you see this line down the middle here, is I've applied um, a uh, Army Painter, a coat of Army Painter Matte Clear Coat over this. Um, and this relates to a problem that I'll talk about at the end of the video. But I wanted to see if that would prevent these from running. I haven't tested this like this before. But you saw how easy they moved on this side. Um, so with a damp brush over here, oh, look at that. So it is possible to set it. Hmm. Well, I'll have some reflections on that at the end here. But obviously, um, you can set it once you've applied it, so you don't have to worry about it moving around too much. And of course, you know, assuming it doesn't get this kind of aggressive rubbing. But even still, I, I'm unable to uh, lift that off the uh, lift that off the plastic card. You know, very much, if any at all. And of course, over here, you know, whoop, there it goes. So really, really neat, um, very, very uh, versatile in the ways that it could be used. A um, couple notes though on the colors before I leave this. The uh, mossy green, um, it has a, a bit of a greenish shade and I don't know how well this is gonna come out um, on the video. Uh, you know, I'm trying to render colors more accurately now so you'll have to take my word for it if it doesn't look entirely accurate but you can see it better in the airbrush that there is a definite green in the mossy green. This is a really nice color to put it like the base of structures to show like a little bit of, you know, weathering moss kind of effect. It's uh, And because it's transparent, it really lends itself to that kind of a use. Um, the the oil brown and the mud brown are actually pretty close in color. As I was applying them, I, I really was thinking, you know, not a big difference. The mud brown a little browner, the oil brown maybe with a tint more black in it. Um, and then the most surprising of all the colors is the soot black. Um, the soot black, when it's applied at full strength, does look black pretty close. But it's actually, as you can see in the airbrush, quite a blue sheen. Uh, so it's it's got it. I don't know. I, there's must be some reasoning for that, and it, it's really been marketed primarily to railroad modelers. But it is interesting that it is not black. You can see in the center, it's got quite a black look. But it really is not black. Well, now my brush is all 
contaminated here, but it's really quite a blue uh, tint to it. Um, and that, I don't know, it's uh, something to consider if you're thinking about applying it. The newest color is a uh, mold, and you can see here, the most transparent of all the colors that I've used, it was very hard to try to get even this area to get very dark, um, but I thought this might be an interesting color for a verdigris effect um, on weathered statues and bronze and copper, um, so that might be something to consider, and it's subtle enough that you can build it up in layers, uh, perhaps sealing between layers um, until you get the desired effect that you're looking for. Um, I don't know, I'm still playing with that as an idea. That gives you an overview of the colors that are available, and uh, give you a little more on how I've been uh, using them lately and some of the problems that I've had. Um, so before talking about how I've been using them, I should at least let you know where you can get it. Uh, as far as I know right now, they're only carrying it in the UK. Uh, there are some distributors that are listed on their website, uh, but I had a problem ordering from one of the companies as they said it wouldn't pass postal regulations. Shh, don't tell anybody I got it. Um, because they thought it was flammable. So. Um, I made an original purchase through Eileen's Emporium, and Eileen's Emporium carries um, a wide range of their colors, I think all of them, and uh, were willing to ship it, and their shipping was very reasonable considering it's coming from the UK. So I'll put a link to their site on the, the uh, description down below, and that way if you're interested in getting them, that's where I would recommend going at this time. I did suggest to them that they try to find a distributor in the United States, and I suggested the War Store, don't know if they watch my videos, um, but I thought it might be um, something that they'd be interested in carrying since they carry a pretty wide range of um, modeling paints and finishes and washes. So it would be a good fit for that. So what? why does this differ from most of the other products on the market? Um, well, first, I've been trying to airbrush some subtle effects at the bottom of buildings using um, regular acrylic paints. And what I'm finding is that when I go to shade, it, it doesn't look right because it's opaque. Even though I'm getting a gradient effect, um, you know, as it, as it bleeds up, you know, and it fades out, still the actual particles of pigment are opaque. So I'm actually covering the original color of the building and it looks wrong. It doesn't look like a shadow and it doesn't look like you can see underneath it. So these are more similar to, to what I'm, from my understanding, would be a candy color for airbrushing. And I'm interested in getting some candy colors as well as transparency lends itself to really producing a very subtle but distinct effect that's unique that you can't really achieve with regular opaque acrylics. The other thing that differs from, and I've noticed on, um, I was just looking at AK products, they have a whole line of weathering liquids, I was looking at Magna and Magna and Cardis, I forget the uh, YouTube uh, name for him, uh, but he um, uses those regularly. Those use mineral spirits for their thinner, so you need to use spirits to, um, well, white spirits, mineral spirits to uh, do any streaking, etc. Et but um, as far as I can tell, based on looking at them, they don't have the transparency this has. So this may be genuinely a unique product on the market and definitely um, gets a, a spot on my shelf for that reason, if no other. So, what have I been doing with them? Well, I've been mostly airbrushing them. I was working a lot with them with brushing, uh, brushing it on and streaking it by hand. And in the end, especially on the Imperial Sector, um, I've decided let's just throw it through the brush. And I've been doing all sorts of gradients and lots of rest effects with it and, and other things. And it's been looking fantastic. Problem is, is that once I had finished coating the buildings and getting them really looking just about done, I washed over the buildings with a uh, weathering powder mix, you know, mixed in water and alcohol, washed that over, and I noticed it started to lift this up. I had sealed this with a quick coat of um, uh, matte varnish um, through the airbrush, and I thought maybe that wasn't enough. I went back over it again with another coat of Army Painter matte uh, clear coat. That didn't seem to help, and still it bled off um, some of the material. Now. I didn't expect this to go this long, but I guess there's a lot to say. One of the things to consider when you're working with this material it, on a, a very, very smooth glass-like surface, you're going to be able to move it around a lot more easily. On a model, especially with a matte paint job on it, if you, if you were to look at the matte paint under a microscope, you're going to see it's incredibly irregular. That's what gives it its matte effect. All right, You get a gloss effect from a very smooth surface, so it reflects light off directly. With a matte effect, the light is directed at all different angles based on the irregular surface, and that's what produces the, the lack of glare coming off of it. 
That means that you cannot move the material around as easily as you can on a glossy surface because those pits will retain the pigment. So you can move it and you can reduce it, but it is going to produce basically a staining effect on anything that you apply it if it has a matte surface. So that's something to consider. Um, you might try it very dilute. Um, they, they recommend um, diluting it before you apply it. This is supposed to be a concentrated form. I have used it straight out of the bottle, but I also cut it um, most of the time at least 50-50 with water or alcohol or a blend of both. Uh, and uh, that way I can build up layers rather than having too much go out all at once. So, perhaps, going back to the Imperial Sector, hope you're following all of this, uh, that the matte surface is of creating uh, more difficulty for getting a good coverage over it as opposed to, you know, here, um, you know, again, I just gave it one quick pass with the Army Painter um, uh, clear coat and it, it's, it's locked it down very well. So perhaps, you know, uh, maybe the next step for me to try would be to apply a gloss coat first, which is going to give a better seal, then matte coat it, then go over it with this. So it adds some steps to it, but if you want a proper effect, that might be the way to go if you want to preserve some of the work that you've done with it um, at that point. Uh, so, and my thinking was, of course, you know, rust and, and those effects should be under the dust, so I wanted to apply those first, and now I'm going to have to go back and touch it up, and uh, basically I wasted about four or five hours of work. Um, well, we won't talk about that. I've already stomped around the shop and screamed and told my cat to leave me alone already today. So, <laughs> so uh, why do I not have pictures of the Imperial Sector for you to look at? Because uh, that's going to be a video that's going to follow this one immediately thereafter until I had my disaster today. So I'm going to be touching it up uh, the remainder of today, and then I'm going to shoot a video of it. And in that video, I will highlight the applications that I've used the uh, model mates on so you can see them actually in action, a uh, variety of colors and a variety of locations, and uh, get a sense of what they can add to your terrain. Uh, but hopefully you found this interesting. As I said, I've only seen one other person, um, Templar's Crusade One, who's actually been um, using the model mates at all, who has mentioned it. Um, so um, I feel like it was something I've been wanting to get out there so that uh, the community can have another tool, another uh, medium on their palette, so to speak, for when they're doing work. Um, if you have any questions about uh, these products, um, I did purchase them myself. This is, an un you know, this is not a sponsored review. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I'd be happy to try to give you all the information I've learned to date. Um, and I expect to be learning quite a bit about more about these materials over the next few months as I continue to use them. So thank you for watching. Keep your eye on the channel. As I mentioned, the Imperial Sector update will be coming very soon, as soon as I redo five hours worth of work. And, uh, and I'll talk to you then.